So now in this video, we're going to look at uh, one of my low voltage cutoff units here. I want to power stuff with batteries in the future. I want the battery to be cut off when the uh, voltage gets low enough. There you can see there's all kinds of conductive areas and components down there. That's why I have the uh, plastic on here. I also have these uh, these kits, these spacers, and I'll open up so show quickly. So these are the female to females. There's also a uh, female and a male end in another box. They came together. But in any case, that would elevate this and keep those conductive areas off of there. And you could stack these if you wanted to because the uh, holes there are in the same spot. But in any case, let's get back to the unit. So the uh, unit, let's look at the voltage that is coming in. So I set this from my bench power supply just to do some testing and there you can see it's above 13 volts and there you go I have the uh, meters to those two screws there and they're screwed down to uh, the wires which ultimately come from my bench power supply I can adjust the voltage and I can even limit the current that helps protect uh, accidental measurement so there you can see we got down to about 12.1 volts I think that's what I have it set so I have it set to they're just a little little buttons there to disconnect at 12.1 volts and then to reconnect at 12.8 volts right down there and there's just a few settings this is made for for a lead acid batteries not lithium ion but there we go the powers back on but lithium ion batteries if I put four in series and each one of them gets to three volts that will be 12 volts and that's as low of a voltage as I really want the uh, batteries to go. And so as you can see there, we get to about there. And uh, and it turns off. I think it I think it takes about a half a second or something to uh to kick in. But um I don't think if you just get like a real brief dip, it automatically turns off. So in any case, this one here we just saw how it works. And right now we know that it is conducting the relay is on and when the uh, LED is red there before it was green when it's red we know that it is off so let's see if it is letting any uh, current go through so I just turned the current of the uh, power supply all the way off we will go to uh, the milliamps here and so I just don't uh, measure current of a power supply directly unless you can limit the current so I just turned the current off and uh, it turned all the way down and let's uh, let's hold it that way you can see it so be very careful if you measure the current of a power supply but I turned the uh, dial down so that there would be no current and now let's go up uh, might as well go to 200 milliamps of uh, current right there so that's the maximum we can ever output and so the because I set a limit on the power supply there's not a digital display there's just a dial so the way to uh, set it is to just drop it all the way to nothing and then you can put the meter at nothing and work your way up like I did there so in any case the uh, to to measure the current let's remove the alligator clip you saw down there good enough I have the alligator clips from the power supply up here and first let's raise the voltage enough where it turns on so we will pull this off and unplug that so the bench power supply now I'm gonna plug into the or clip onto the red probe there and then the uh, black probe I can complete the circuit right there and you can see how much current is going through while the unit is on right now so the LED is only conducting uh, I'm guessing probably this is a 1 kilo ohm resistor at uh, 13 volts so uh, we got a 2 volt drop from the LED so probably about 11 milliamps through the LED so I'm guessing we have about 50 milliamps of current being used up by the unit let's turn it off and now it looks like, well, it's off. That's that's pretty good. That's probably pretty much just the LED here, uh, 1.82 milliamps of current. So 
That of course is a drain on a battery if you're using this to protect a battery. Uh, but that's that's really low. That's actually lower than I expected. So I would feel pretty comfortable using this. You wouldn't want to you know leave a battery unattended for long periods of time if you think it might be become uh, discharged but uh, if you just need something to make sure it shuts off if the voltage gets too low especially if you're you know attending to it fairly often uh, that should if the battery is big enough that should last a, a real long time just draining that little bit of current so I'm really happy with this unit it's actually kind of the ugliest one it's got little switches and stuff instead of like a trim pot to give you a variable. I'm going to turn the power off. Uh, but in uh, any case, let's uh, kind of zoom in, take a look at this, and you can see the settings we have. So this was meant more for lead acid batteries than uh, lithium ion. But as I said before, 4 series batteries, I'm okay with the 12 volts, plus I could go a little bit lower. And so ultimately, Lithium ion batteries, you can get down to 2.5 volts each. Four of them in series is 10 volts. But unfortunately, they don't always evenly discharge or charge for that matter. And so, even if you got it down to uh, 2.5 volts each, one of them might be 3 volts and the other one 2 volts or something. That would be bad. And, you know, brief amount of time, probably not too bad. It's not like it's instantly destroyed because it dropped too low. But uh, over... Uh, period of time you'd have to look up the exact details but uh, it's just not good to get uh, too low of a voltage or too high of a voltage with lithium ion batteries so the extreme ranges are 2.5 volts and 4.2 volts people charge them up to 4.2 volts all the time to get the maximum energy and you should cut it off above 2.5 volts each 4 series would be 10 volts as a safety margin you know like this this uh, takes a tiny bit of current, only about 2 milliamps, so, so even one battery would last a long time just uh, having 2 milliamps of current that it has to power. And then the uh, reconnect, you know, it's the reconnect number is higher. So I set this one to 12.1 volts, and then this one to 12.8 volts. And so we have a range. You discharge it, it turns off. Then it lets you recharge it past where it turned off before it turns back on again. That's way, that way it's not uh, flickering on and off rapidly. And before I go, actually, the meter is set to measure milliamps before. As I said, you have to be careful when you're measuring milliamps. So make sure you turn it off right after you're done measuring current. Turn it off, set it to voltage. Voltage is safe too, but uh, don't leave it on milliamps. A lot of times I see the meters on, I try to take a voltage measurement right away. And uh, the uh, voltage is safe to measure, but milliamps of current, if you measure a power supply directly, it will probably blow a fuse in the meter. So it's a good habit to, as soon as you're done measuring uh, current, get it off of current, either voltage or off completely. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.